Hey there, Alex Kidman here, off on another little EV road trip. And this time I wanted to kind of discuss the issues or the challenges that you might face doing a more regional road trip. Because this is one of those things that comes up pretty often that, oh, you know, EVs are fine for the city, but if you want to go anywhere regionally, you're completely stuffed. I don't think that's entirely true. I mean, logically, it's not actually true at all because you can recharge an EV anywhere there is power. But I know what people really mean by that is fast charging. And certainly, without a doubt, the situation should get better and it is getting better over time. So what I'm going to do is take a brief little weekend away road trip traveling from Sydney to the beautiful town of Armadale. And some people will know why I'm going to Armadale this time of year. Others may not. And I'm going to document the process of where I stopped, how long it took to charge, any adventures or misadventures along the way. So let's hit the road. And so the road we hit. Now, a few ground rules. This was done in a Tesla Model 3 2021 model, uh, just the standard range plus, nothing fancy there. It was originally going to be in a new EV that I was going to test, but that vehicle did not end up being available. So we hit the road, we got to driving, and our first stop was in Scone in New South Wales. Now, the car itself wanted to route us through to Holiday which is a winery which has a bunch of Tesla superchargers. I've stopped there before, and yeah, they work, but it's a winery, and we wanted lunch. We wanted choices for food, so that's why we actually chose to stop in Scone instead. There was someone here as we arrived, but literally they pulled out as we pulled in, so that all worked out rather nicely, and the charging went really well. By the time we'd gone and actually got food, brought it back to the car and ate it, we were ready to roll. And I should point out, we could have done it just off this charge. There was just enough to get to Armadale. You could conceivably do that with this car that way and with anything with a longer range quite easily and comfortably you could do it off this one charging stop, which is not what we did because we opted instead to make our next stop in Tamworth. And this was for two reasons. Firstly, while we did have enough power to get to Armadale, it was around the 10% mark and there's all the hills around Bendemeer which can totally chew up power. I'd rather have a slightly bigger buffer. Your own preferences may vary. But also because the Tamworth Tesla superchargers have a reputation, shall we say. And in fact, earlier in the week, they had been listing them as all offline, but people on PlugShare were saying some of them had worked. I'd been through before when some of them had worked. And indeed, as I'm showing here, Station 2B is plugged in, but it sure as heck did not want to work. I also did this charging stop because of the journeys I wanted to make on the way back, basically checking that this was or wasn't operational. that would have changed some of my other choices. But while 2B was not 2B, as the case was, 1A was perfectly happy to charge. And in fact, we only charged here for five minutes, more or less as a proof of concept kind of thing. I did also leave a PlugShare review, reminded folks to grab PlugShare, noting to people, hey, 2B might not be working because it certainly was not working for me that day. More on that later. But we then hit the road again, very close to Armadale now, of course, but we did choose to make just one more stop. Why make one more stop? Well... Honestly, the people we were staying with were actually kind enough to say, hey, you can charge off our solar, don't sweat it. And that's lovely and under any other circumstances would have taken them up on them, loved them a bit. But I wanted to test this against publicly available chargers. And that meant knowing whether or not the Armadale charger was going to behave itself because it's a single NRMA charger. So let's head there. Driving in Australia, for those not familiar with it, is lots of long, long, long roads. It takes a while to get places. So Armadale's charger was... Well, it was an interesting one. When we got there, there was actually someone else already trying to charge here. So we went and had a quick loo break. And by the time we got back from that, they had reappeared and they were having problems getting it to charge. It charged a certain amount, enough for what they needed, but it had stopped charging. They was trying to get more and it just would not behave. And we rather nervously plugged in and waited to see what would happen. Now, it did start charging, as we can see here, but it didn't keep charging. We actually went to go and browse one of the local bookstores. Trivial note, the... Used bookstore in the centre of Armadale used to be the bank many, many, many years ago. But I digress. And the thing was, whilst I was busy perusing a tome, my phone informed me, oh, the car stopped charging. And indeed it had. It appeared that you could only get about 20 minutes out of this charger before it just decided, no, nah, you're not having any more. But this was OK. We had enough for what we needed. Armadale is, by the way, a lovely place to visit. Uh, on the Saturday, I went and did a park run, as is my want. I also played with a cat. Oh, yeah. And there was also an extremely long concert out at the winery, which was extremely enjoyable. But of course, I've got to cut all the audio out of this because otherwise I'd get a massive copyright strike. I think it's kind of had to be there. But great times were had by all. 
and the next day it was time to get going again. An attempt at a top charge in Armadale, but not an entirely satisfying one, as again, after about 15 minutes, it just went, no, I'm not charging anymore, and nothing that you can do can get me charging again. This is way, way less than ideal. Now, Armadale is meant to be getting a bunch of open Tesla superchargers at some point, but driving past that site, absolutely nothing has started there, and it's not really clear when it will either. This is definitely something that does need improvement. We need to get to that point where... Regional charges are just assumed the way the petrol stations are, but we're not there yet. We're not there yet by far, but it was time to get back on the road. But before we could go back to Tamworth, we had a brief diversion. Because it was time for a quick stop in Nundle at the Woolen Mill to indulge my better half's crafty passions. But also because I think on these trips, it's important to stop and smell the roses, to actually take in the places that you're in, some of which can be quite beautiful and, and quite serene and really good for you. Now, Nundle does actually weirdly have an EV charger. We didn't end up using it. It's an Everty one. And the weird thing there is it's on PlugShare, but not on PlugShare. So if you search for it on PlugShare, it does not come up. But if you search for Nundle EV Charger via Google, the first link that comes up is the PlugShare link, and it opens it in the PlugShare app as the right charger. It's really weird. I don't know what the story is there, but having sated our needs for wool, we got back on the road and back towards Tamworth. And Tamworth was busy. All four stalls were occupied, which surprised me because 2B had not been working the day before. And I got to chatting to the guy who was on 2B and asked him, oh, you know, working okay for you because it wasn't working great the day before. And he actually asked me if I was the one who'd left the plug share review, which was kind of cool. Shows the benefit of actually telling people about things that may or may not work. And we got to chat in. He'd just been to Nundle as well, hadn't used the charger. And by, by the time we'd finished chatting, in fact, he was ready to go. So we plugged in and got to charging there, which we very much needed by this point. The diversion at Nundle and the fact that Armadale had not worked as well meant that we needed to, although I'll point out again, we could have taken the option to charge at our friend's place and we would not have even needed Tamworth, but I did try and keep this as pure to public charges as I could. Back on the road again, and again, we actually technically had enough to get home, but home with about 3 to 5%, which is outside my comfort zone for this kind of thing, because while we're going downhills, you can see here, lots of uphill, lots of highway speeds can quickly sap that kind of power, and I figured we may as well do one stop. Plus, of course, we still actually had to have lunch, which meant that it was time once again, and finally, to stop in Scone. And this was legitimately a quick stop. The longest wait we had was, in fact, that there was someone else charging when we turned up. But by the time we'd gone and grabbed some food and walked back to the car, they were getting ready to go. So we literally just ate, and the amount of charge that we got there was more than enough to get us home. In fact, we could have unplugged while we were still eating, but we figured, well, we may as well have the little safety buffer. And then it was just... Time to drive home, usual Australian road driving conditions. So what are my conclusions from this? So first of all, is it feasible? Well, yes, obviously I made it. But I'll throw the full stats and figures up here, and I'm sure the anti-EV crowd are going to want to jump on the amount of time it took to charge, the amount of time it taken to charge there. To which I'll say, well, yes, but, and yes, but in terms of the choices that we made, 100%, I am confident that I could have done this just with the stops at Scone. I could have just stopped and fully charged up there, and I would have had enough. And those, both of those, were totally lunch break stops, which I would have done in any other kind of car. Now, I made other choices and I've factored that timing in, but a lot of those other choices I could go off and do other things. I think this is one of the things that gets ignored in all of this. The costing was quite reasonable, but absolutely, there could be more charges on the road and they could be more reliable. That Armadale charger especially was a bit of a nightmare and if I was stuck with that and I needed more, that could be really problematic. There are some motel and hotel chargers in that town and I probably would have driven around and asked questions about using them had I been truly stuck. But overall, yeah, mission accomplished. A really enjoyable weekend had. It did not ruin the weekend for me, as someone once said, I forget who. And that's my take on that trip. Be interested in people's feedback. What did you think? Got any observations on that trip? Have you done it before yourself? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.